Stephen, do you want to? Hey, everybody, this is Harvey Sluggo Wasserman. Hey, everybody, it's Harvey Sluggo Wasserman back with the 119th a Green Grassroots Emergency Election Protection Zoom call. Um, this is the day before the runoff um, in, in Georgia. Um, are you, some of you will be hearing this on Thursday after the runoff in Georgia and you'll know what happened. You have the uh, benefit of hindsight. We do not have the benefit of foresight here. We're gonna have a two hour program. Uh, the first hour will be broadcast at Pro Progressive Radio Network, prn.live at uh, five o'clock on Thursday. Um, the rest of it is um, gonna be in the first hour. We're gonna cover some things. We normally wouldn't do this because the, we want people to be um, plugging into the Georgia primary, uh, the Georgia runoff, uh, but we have two very imminent um, events happening. Um, in Los Angeles uh, tomorrow, uh, December 6th, Tuesday, the Los Angeles City Council will be evaluating a proposal that has to do with towers and 5G. And we have the great Julie Levine on with us uh, to uh, talk about uh, exactly what people need to do uh, to- Board of Supervisors, it's county. It's Sorry. Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles. Yes. And then uh, secondly, we're going to, uh, in the second segment of the first hour, we have Tatanka Bricka, uh, <clears throat> uh, Ron Leonard, and others to talk about um, uh, nuclear and uh, Maria to kill solar energy. And uh, that is also imminent. And so we wanted to include both uh, of those issues in this first hour. Uh, and then in the second hour, we're going to be joined by Andrea Miller, who's been with us many times before, and she's going to instruct people on how you can call in to Georgia today and tomorrow to encourage getting out the vote uh, in, the, in the tomorrow's uh, runoff in Georgia. Apparently, there are record numbers of uh, our early voters now, um, many, many hundreds of thousands of people have turned out in Georgia already to vote. And uh, I know we take that for granted now, but um, me being much older than most of you on the call, remember the day when everybody only voted on election day and early voting was a rarity. Uh, now, you know, elections are a couple of weeks, a month, um, and uh, it's better, it's much better this way. Uh, it's been a major democratizing improvement. Imagine, <clears throat> If all these hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people who have voted already in Georgia uh, would have had to wait until a single election day. So that's been a big, big progress. So our first hour today, we're gonna to talk 5G for about 20 minutes with Julie Levine and Doug Wood, who she will introduce. And then the second half segment, we are joined by the great Carl Grossman, um, my good buddy from the anti-nuclear movement from the previous century, <laughs> and we, we both date back to the 70s with this issue, for God's sakes, and, um, and we will discuss a solar and nuclear in California, and then we'll fill the rest of the hour with great stuff. The, that will be broadcast on PRN, and then the second hour, we're going to talk about Georgia, and people should be prepared to start calling in to get out the vote. We are nonpartisan, as, as we say, we really want people to uh, uh, just come out and vote. I will say that uh, Karen Bass, who's on my T-shirt, uh, will be because of getting getting out the vote, will become the first uh, female uh, and the second African American gov uh, mayor of Los Angeles, which has about 10 million people. So, so being the governor of Ohio. So, okay, let's rock and roll here. Uh, we have 41 people with us. Uh, Julie Levine, you are. You are in the Sequoia National Forest or thereabouts uh, because you have fled Los Angeles due to 5G and uh, electromagnetic uh, technologies. Can you explain to us, please, with Doug Wood, who you will introduce, what is happening in Los Angeles tomorrow that requires public input and what the keys are here on the EMT issue? 
Right. Okay, I had planned to give you a teeny bit of background about why this is so important and why telecom was in collusion uh, with government on this. But I instead am going to turn directly to my colleague and um, really a leader in this fight, Doug Wood, who is the executive director of Americans for Responsible Technology, um, who's been working very closely with us. We have now a, a coalition called Fiber First LA, um, which is working on this to talk about, basically, let me, let me just give you my teensy background because I really want Doug to take this away for us today and say that as those of you who've heard me before know, I became sick during the Occupy LA, Occupy Wall Street movement. They were using scramblers, the police, et cetera. And uh, of course we were using our phones for everything and I became quite sick. I have never recovered. And as I looked for answers, I saw increased collusion between government and the industry. Uh, things like the Telecom Act of 1996, precluding challenges based on the environment, which the courts had uh, it meant, uh, taken so far to mean, among other things, our health. Um, and um, the fact that this is minimized, like nuclear, like tobacco, any harm is minimized. And um, there are constantly enabling uh, laws, making it harder and harder to fight. So um, during Occupy, I also saw that as there was more and more of this infrastructure in these communities, low income communities, that people were getting sicker and sicker. And oftentimes they didn't have answers because nobody was explaining it to them. And Harvey knows this because I've been on your show um, on KPFK. People actually didn't have anywhere to go. And I suddenly became the place that I was getting like 20, 30, 40 phone calls a day of people who were getting sick from this infrastructure. And I just wanted to just conclude my piece because I really want Doug to talk about what's happening tomorrow with the Board of Supervisors. And at this late hour, what um, those of you who are able or willing can do to help us. Um, but I just want to say that, um, that they then put, after probably four years of asking under the freedom of information laws, Without my knowledge or consent, they put small cell towers all around my home. They encircled my home with them. And as a result, I have been forced to move. And there's been very, very difficult to fight these on any level. Now, LA County is now poised tomorrow to do a final vote to pass horrific ordinance that must have been designed, if not written by the industry, which will make this actually, um, it will, um, it will, kind of create what is already happening de facto because we're getting calls every single day. Oh my God, they're putting cell towers in front of my home. What can I do to stop this? And I'm going to turn over to Doug Wood and tell you what it, at this laid out and why this national group of lawyers and experts and CEOs like Doug have chosen to join this fight here in LA County because it's very significant for the country as a whole. So without further ado, sure. Doug, it is a pleasure to introduce you. Uh, Doug Wood, it's good to have you. Please uh, give us your con credentials. And also, uh, Julie and Doug, if you'll both please uh, put the links of where people can go to find more information and to be in touch with you and your organizations, that would be uh, very important, please. Okay, so Doug Wood, go ahead, please. Great. Well, first of all, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on your show. I'm so delighted that Carl Grossman is going to be on later, my friend. Uh, and my uh, my Long Island uh, fellow Long Islander, I am in New York, uh, just safely outside uh, New York City, uh, born and raised here. I am the founder and the and the national director of Americans for Responsible Technology. We're a nonprofit organization advocating for the safe technology for everybody. Um, we're concerned about some changes that are being proposed for the the municipal code of Los Angeles County. And before you all go to sleep and start snoring, because I know it's not the, the sexiest thing to talk about, but your local code is the thing that determines whether or not a 5G antenna can go up right outside your home without your notice or consent. Um, right now, uh, there is a provision for notice and, and, uh, and comment when there's going to be an antenna going up in Los Angeles County. And they want to take that away. The, the new revised code strips away these rights that have been given, that have been enjoyed by people in Los Angeles for years. Um, this is all in a move to, quote, close the digital divide. But we don't think that's a good way to close the digital divide because what they're suggesting is that people who don't currently have uh, any good connection to the internet will be just fine with wireless 
but we know better. We know that fiber optic is really the thing that people need. It, fiber optic is kind of future-proof. It's reliable. It's safe. It doesn't come with all these um, attendant problems that come with wireless. So we're urging people to call the supervisors to submit their comments, or maybe it's too late to submit comments. Is that right, Julie? They can just they can just call. Um, the, um, it's too late uh, to submit comments in writing. However, there will be an opportunity tomorrow at the hearing to speak under public comment. And you can call your supervisors before 5 p.m. today. Um, and that, but I ho hopefully after you hear Doug finish and with whatever yeah. I can add, so, you'll feel compelled to do that. One of one of the misconceptions that's happening, and it's it's being promoted by the unfortunately by the regional planning department in Los Angeles County is that this is required. That there's that that approving these antennas is so difficult and time consuming uh, under the FCC shot clocks that they really have no choice but to do this. Well, you know, other cities around the country are, are, are finding ways to deal with this without taking away the public notice and comment. Um, so it's it's not required by the FCC, but but that's what the uh, supervisors are being told. We know that radiation is not particularly safe, RF radiation, which, um, as you may know, we're still operating under uh, FCC um uh, guidelines that were ad adopted in 1996 based on 1980s science. This was science developed by the people who were developing microwave ovens. And the only thing they knew about microwaves is that it could heat your skin. That is still the national standard we are living with in 2022 is whether or not it can heat your skin. And despite the uh, thousands and thousands of scientific studies that have been done showing that the possibility of RF radiation causing biological harm, we're still living with these outdated um, guidelines. So the guidelines are not safe. It's really not safe to have an antenna right outside your bedroom window. Uh, I feel terrible for children, for parents of young children who are living in apartments with an antenna right outside or right on top of their building. Um, they're literally bathing in uh, in radiation all day and all night. Um, there's some fire concerns about these antennas. They get hot. They uh, and if they should be toppled in an accident or high winds, they can start a fire, which is not what you need in California right now. Um, and there's federal dollars that are available for fiber optic connections, and we are really pushing the uh, Los Angeles Board of Supervisors to hold out for fiber optic to those communities that have been underserved for years. Fiber optic is the way of the future. There's federal dollars that are available for it. The federal government has expressed a clear preference for fiber optic over wireless. Um, but you know, the wireless industry is unregulated. It's an unbelievably profitable business and they just can't wait to put up more and more antennas and build their business out before people figure out that having an antenna right outside their bedroom window is not a good idea. Um, I will leave it there. Julie, if you want to add anything else, um, let me know. Yes, I've been, um, I've been um, putting in links to 5G Free California and Fiber First LA. Fiber First LA is the probably the, the best place at this point to look for information. But the bottom line is telecom is really um, aggressive. Um, very unconcerned about human health or about fires or about safety, and they're pressuring municipalities, there's no question about it, across the country um, to enact um, guidelines that are favorable to them but harmful to all of us. We just won an FCC lawsuit, and we have the same attorney poised and ready for a lawsuit in this one, just so you know. We're ready to go, but we're hoping to avoid it in this final hour by reaching some kind of negotiation. We have the Sierra Club uh, weighing in, other groups weighing in, um, and we're hoping that you will weigh in too. Um, so I, I, Scott I, I, McCullough, who, yeah, go ahead. No, I see, I see or people are asking about the scientific studies um, and I'll put in the chat the, the website, americansforresponsibletech.org and there you'll find under a science tab, literally hundreds and hundreds of studies you're welcome and there's many more than that um but so we just wanted fcc uh lawsuit 
where yeah, we reputable, presented reputable. 200, to over 200 of these studies. And we won the lawsuit based on the fact that clearly the FCC had ignored clear evidence of harm, particularly to children, and not factored it into their guidelines um, and had not reevaluated their guidelines since they um, began to take on this responsibility over 20 years ago. So um, uh, we definitely have science to back this up. Um, the harm, in fact, the US government has known it since the like 40s, like with military studies and all kinds of things. But there is a very clear cover up, just like with the nuclear industry, just like with the tobacco industry. And it's made easier by the fact that so many of us, of course, are addicted to our devices. And of course, we all want progress and we all want technology, but we're pushing for safe technology and very, very glad to have Doug and others working with us. Okay. So I, yeah. Do you have questions? Anybody like have a question? Yes, I know you're very, 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 uh, this. So. Mary Butler, Dustin, Jeffrey, go ahead. Mary, we'll, we'll cut this off in about five minutes, but let's, um, let's have questions now. Very quickly, Mary. No? Um, uh, yeah, Dustin. I'm here. All right, go ahead. Quickly, Mary, please. Um, quickly, um, has anybody realized that 90% of the distributors for these towers is a uh, a very suspicious China company that's making them look like pine trees, like out of nowhere, um, driving down the road. It's like, I've never seen that pine tree before. And then you walk up and you realize this is a camouflaged tower in a parking lot that there was no trees before. Right. And they're using microplastics in, in the development of these. So, and I mean, Carl knows about this because he's been working closely with you know, Kate Keel and, and others on the global weaponization of space and whatnot. But in this infrastructure, they're using microplastics. They're using all kinds of things that are not only finite um, minerals that are being um, causing exploitation of workers and everything else, slavery, but also are clearly polluting our environments, not to mention the um, electromagnetics. Ridiculous, unbelievable. By the way, the, the origins of this <clears throat> are with Clinton Gore. In 1996, yeah the Telecommunications Act, which gave birth to Fox News and uh, Rush Limbaugh and all that other fascist stuff. It, it, there was a clause in the 1996 Telecommunications Act <clears throat> that prohibited local communities from banning cell towers. I mean, it's outrageous, uh, beyond outrageous. It said basically, if you're, if you're a town or a county and you don't want cell towers in your town and county, you're prohibited by federal law from stopping them. It's outrageous. And that, that was Clinton Gore who did that. Um, um, uh, uh, Justin, Jeffrey, and Wendy, go ahead. Justin, a blank. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I'm looking for specifics in research, stuff that will help people understand what they're looking at. You can have all the studies in the world, but if people don't understand them, it doesn't mean anything. So one example that I was given recently was blue light damages retinas if it's in too intense. And LEDs cause particularly intense type of uh, damage because it doesn't distribute the light. It puts it in huge uh, clumps, clusters of light. And so that overwhelms the retina. Uh, so uh, these sorts of specific examples matter a whole lot. And I'm hoping that we can get some uh, clear and concise messaging around specific biological damage. Thanks. Yes, so just we do have we do have that messaging available. Um, and um, if you go into those science studies, you'll see they're they're somewhat broken down. I can also I just sent you my email address and I can send you studies on that. And LEDs are similar in that there's that wireless component. Um, and for people who are electrosensitive, they are very bothered by the LED lights. And by the Justin, way, we, we, Justin, I just want to mention, we also have a radio show on WBAI Pacific in New York, and we had a great interview with Dr. Josh, Joshua Rosenthal, who goes through the whole blue light thing. If you want to check it out, I put it in the in the, uh, in the the chat. It's greenstreetnews.org. Green Thank you. And I, will, I want to mention in, in January 23rd, I believe it is Monday, January 23rd, I'll check the date. We are gonna have a summit on this call, on this Zoom, uh, be, for the first gathering, joint gathering between the opponents of nuclear power and the opponents of, of the, these technologies that we're talking about here. 
Because if you look at the history of the health research, they're completely parallel yes. to what's going on with low level radiation from nuclear power and electromagnetic radiation from these uh, cell technologies. So that will be January 23rd, Monday, we will have the first summit uh, where we will join people like Carl Grossman uh, with people like Doug Wood uh, to really um, co uh, collate uh, the information on both forms of radiation. Okay, um, uh, go ahead, uh, Jeffrey, then Wendy. Jeffrey, one question, please, quickly. Can you hear me? Yeah, go, go, go. All that, if all that stuff's about Julie, Doug, if all that stuff's involving radiation, then we should then we should partner partner up because I'm working on something called called for, that I'm trying to submit to the UN call. I mean, an inter, special international day annually called International Radiation Awareness Day. You know, the purpose of that is to raise awareness about the negative effects of radiation that it does to that does to us. You know, what well, needs That's to be an excellent idea, Jeffrey. You know, you and I have already been partnered a little bit on Facebook, so let's expand that. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, uh, Wendy Lederman. Thank you. Um, just a quick statement and a um, question. Uh, yeah, in, in Florida, they don't ask, they just build. And it's like, literally, you turn around and there's towers everywhere. And um, I do a lot of walking and I've like had to relocate several times recently. And so every town I, I'm in, I, as I'm walking, I see um, like animals, like squirrels, birds. I've seen iguanas, like a group of the worst I saw was a group of like really big iguanas, like in a canal, like frozen with their mouths just open. Like there's no point of impact or damage, but just animals dead on the ground with like no, no blood, no nothing. Just, and I, and then I'll always look up and see a 5G tower nearby. And it's something I've been observing for a couple of years now. Um, and I just wanted to mention um, if, if, you could expand if there's a connection with the whole Starlink thing and um and Elon Musk and the whole broadband of like covering the earth in in uh, radiation, which again, like microwave radiation, it just it heats up the water molecules in your body. And just if anybody knows just how basic microwave radiation works, it just it can't be good for humans. Thanks so much for Wendy, you need to convince my sister in Miami Dade that Miami yeah. Dade there. It's a, so, it would be a, so, it would be a great so topic I, for another show, I think. It's, it's it it would take a long time. Let's just what's the very short story is the FCC with no health experience and no authority is 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 giving permission for these satellites to go up in space, and they admit they have no authority, but they're doing it anyway. It's a completely out of and one of those satellites is considered the largest cell tower on Earth now. <laughs> so they are definitely having an impact and. If probably know they're doing Wi-Fi under the oceans as well now. So there's just no stopping them until we make them stop. And we're not going to make them stop until we understand just how, how bad this is. And the effects on wildlife, again, very documented on birds, on butterflies, on all the pollinators, on bees, et cetera. Huge, huge, huge impact. You gotta and now on dolphins and other animals underwater. Yeah, you got to wonder if, if Elon Musk uh, has been sent by extraterrestrials to destroy human life. I mean, it, it, it seems that way. So listen, we are at the end of our, it's 224 already. You guys are fabulous, Julie Levine, Doug Wood. Uh, this whole EMT thing, there is a vote tomorrow in LA. Please look it up. And our, our national summit, our first uh, summit, joining the no nukes and the no um, EMT um, uh, movements, it will be January 23rd on this call so put it'll be we'll start off with it it'll be at the top of the hour that's monday january 3rd we will uh, exchange notes and and merge our tactics and strategies and and uh, make an impact so again and julie sorry for all your tourists with this technology um, um like you have to you had to flee los angeles you know uh, there'll be a movie but you know but, but i just want to say Doug. Doug and, and Scott McCullough and, jo and Julian Bresser and all of these people are my heroes because they understood it's not just about my fight, it's for everybody. Because you know, you and I are the same that way. That's what we care about. And because of them, we have a shot in LA County of setting a precedent that will have ramifications across the country. Okay, so put it in the chat, please. That's tomorrow. <clears throat> we, uh, there's a lot going on tomorrow with, uh, in Georgia as well, which will talk about in the second hour. Uh, but Doug and Julie, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we're gonna move on now, just put all that stuff 
in the chat, please, and put January 23rd on your calendar. Um, we're going to move on now to the nuclear issue and the solar issue in California, where action is also imminent. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and uh, Carl Grossman is one of the giants in this field, um, is the, what the effect of a statewide bailout for nuclear plants, which includes forcing people to pay for nuclear plants in utility districts where they don't even get any electricity. I mean, it's outrageous. Uh, in California, in order to underwrite this ridiculous bailout for Diablo Canyon, the state wants to force people in San Diego and in Eureka up north and other places where none of the electricity even comes. Now, Carl Grossman, one of the great um, leaders and experts in the anti-nuclear movement, is, lives on Long Island, and he has been forced to pay for four reactors that are, you know, as far away as Ohio, as far as I can tell. So, Carl, can you tell us, please? And Carl is the, the author of many, many books, including Power Struggle, uh, and it was uh, in, integral to the fight that uh, defeated the Shoreham reactor near where he lives on Long Island, and I guess where Doug lives too. Uh, uh, Carl, can you tell us what has happened in New York with this insane bailout that they're trying to duplicate here in California? Yeah, well, it happened, and it happened in 2017. Uh, Ford uh, aged nuclear power plants upstate, Fitzpatrick and Nine Mile Point One, Nine Mile Point Two, and Gina. Uh, the good news, though it was kind of weird news, was that Andrew Cuomo, who was the governor at the time, uh, went along, and there was a huge push for decades, of course, to shut down the Indian Point plants. So he went along with that, but uh, he uh, then pushed for uh, this $7.6 billion bailout, and it's attached to the electric bills of every resident in New York, every business, 7.6 billion for 12 years to keep these antiquated uh, nukes in operation. And the justification, which is, uh, uh, well, what is used these days on the federal level too, is the, uh, is the false claim uh, that uh, nuclear power is uh, carbon free, uh, disregarding the, the nuclear fuel cycle, uh, mining, milling, enrichment, and so forth, and the emissions of radioactive carbon, carbon-14, actually, from nuclear power plants. Uh, so uh, Cuomo and um, uh, the operated chicks in energy operated chicks in New York State went for this. Uh, there was a lawsuit. Uh, unfortunately, the lawsuit didn't succeed. Uh, and uh, it, it was a strong lawsuit with a uh, a focus on a Susan Shapiro, which some of you folks will know her. Uh, she's on the board with me of the Radiation and Public Health Project. Uh, I'm just quoting from a story I wrote. The $7.6 billion handout, says Susan, is based on the ludicrous claim that nuclear power is somehow good for the environment while ignoring the continuous radiation pollution and the continuous thermal emissions, as well as the release of greenhouse gases. Uh, Tim Judson of the Nuclear Information and Resource Service, uh, here I, I quote in my piece, uh, declaring that uh, the claim that nuclear power is carbon free is preposterous. But uh, I, I think importantly and, and terribly, what this New York State bailout signified is, is a model for uh, other states uh, including now California and uh, and the federal government to, um, uh, to, I mean, Wall Street won't touch nukes anymore. So to have the government's taxpayers, in fact, uh, bail out uh, uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, and just let, let, let me note here that I'm also on the board of Beyond Nuclear. And we had a, a board conference call uh, last week in Kevin Camps. And I'm sure many, many of you know Kevin Camps was talking about the enormous amount of money uh, now being, not only now, being put together to bail out nuclear plants, 
Uh, but in the, the pipeline, uh, he spoke of about, well, tens of billions of dollars in the uh, in various uh, uh, federal uh, pots, uh, money pots, for bailing out nuclear power plants, old nuclear power plants. Uh, and um, that's what uh, has to be stopped. It's amazing. Now, uh, Tatanka Bricka is on the phone, on, those, on the call with us. And to talk, I don't know if you've ever been in touch with Carl, but there should be a major um, um, synergy here so that we in California can get a grip on the, on the lawsuits that were filed in New York. Now, I, as Carl says, they didn't succeed, but a lot of work was done um, in the legal field. A lot of, a lot of briefs were written uh, pointing out why this bailout in New York was insane. I mean, we're, we're like pikers here in California. They're only bailing out 1.4 billion. Uh, in New York, they did 7.6 billion, for God's sakes. And they did the same thing. They forced people all over the state to pay for power that they don't even get. So Tatanka, you wanna jump in on that? Um, yeah, um, Carl, thank you for all your work. I've heard about you over the years. I want to bring up something just that I hope we'll consider in the January 23rd. There's very little talk anywhere in this country about everything for many a long time, all the money and all the technology that goes up into space to create the ionized sky. It's part of our full spectrum dominance plan. It's part of you know the geoengineering that's been going on for probably just about a quarter of a century that can uh, uh, trigger earthquakes and trigger volcanoes and droughts and floods and all this. So I, I think uh, let, let's explore that because we can't forget that the whole reason for the existence of these nuclear power plants is to create fissile material for nuclear weapons. And the $2 trillion that went up into space that was called by this administration, a simple upgrade is not. It's a new space race higher levels of technology, AI, and it's dangerous for, for the entire planet. So I hope that will be a part of the connecting the dots. Well, Carl, uh, uh, Tatanka works with Danny Sheehan as well. Who does, I don't know if anybody has filed suit yet to stop this bailout at Diablo, but certainly the groundwork that was done in New York will be useful uh, to the, the, the legal actions in California. So Tatanka, you and Carl, and Carl, by the way, is a great, great pioneer, wrote a lot of the first stuff about nukes in space and, and really, uh, you know, single-handedly, um, um, along with Bruce, Bruce Gagnon, uh, really opened up that dialogue. So you guys really need to be in touch. Sounds good. I'd love to be in touch with you, Carl. Yeah, one of the books that I've written is, um... Uh, the Wrong Stuff, uh, a play on the right stuff. And then also a, a smaller book, um, Michio Kaku did the introduction, uh, Weapons in Space, because a lot of the nuclearization of space uh, is, is based on the, it's been going on for now decades uh, to uh, place weapons in space. And well, the, the basis of Star Wars that we didn't know it at the time we're orbiting battle platforms with hypervelocity, got particle beams, laser weapons with actual reactors or super plutonium systems on these orbiting battle platforms. Now with the Space Force, uh, we're back in, uh, frankly, in the Star Wars period. It's, it's my, you have to wonder about our species, uh, for God's sakes. You'll both be glad to know that I actually once debated one of the um, big advocates of, of a Star Wars, Phyllis Schwafley. Uh, she was every bit as horrible as you might imagine. Uh, Ron Leonard has a hand. Ron, you're in the dark there, man. I, you got to turn on your lights or something, but go ahead. Uh, I'm saving energy. Uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I, I put it in the chat, uh, the little debacle that New York State had created. Uh, and uh, Harvey, as you mentioned, that one of these nuclear power plants that got a gift from New York State taxpayers to their private uh, utility uh, owners, uh, it then decided to institute a new program of putting in hydrogen power and uh, wasting more energy. But the real waste in this whole process 
is the simple fact that if you look at the budget, and again, it's in the chat for the $7.6 billion that are being given to private stockholders uh, for New York State supposedly to save 600 jobs in nuclear power plants because, you know, God only knows if we gave the employees a uh, early retirement that would have certainly have cost $7.6 billion. I don't think so. Uh, the real tragedy in this is that there's more money in the state really spent on renewable energy in the New York State uh, Renewable Energy uh, NYSERDA budget. And the person that actually did the lawsuit that you were talking about is my friend Manager Green, the environmental director of uh, the Clearwater. Uh, anybody who knows Pete Seeger and the Clearwater should know about that boat. And uh, she's also a uh, Ulster County uh, legislator and uh, was very active in the closure of Indian Point, the infamous nuclear power plant put in originally by Con Ed on the Hudson River, a terrible tragedy. Yeah, uh, Con Ed is about right. <clears throat> We're joined by Andrea Miller. Andrea, we are gonna take up the um, primary, I mean the uh, runoff in uh, Georgia in the second hour um, uh, because uh, this is radio broadcast and what, what you're gonna tell us will be obsolete by Thursday. So um, um, we will have you on starting at uh, uh, six o'clock Eastern time to instruct folks on how to make calls, if that's okay with you. If you can join us at six, that would be wonderful. But uh, well, uh, don't you have Gabe joining you at six? I, I think so, yes. Um, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but we were thinking that you would be on with us at six just to give us a quick uh, rundown on how to make calls. If that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be back at six. That's not what I do, but I'll be back at six. Well, we I know Gabe is planning on being here as well. Okay, well, whatever fits your schedule, we, yep. we, just, we wanna run a quick briefing and then let yep. people go so they can make actual calls. Yep, I'll do the briefing. It'll be like five minutes and then we'll turn it over to Gabe. Okay, we'll also let you uh, conduct the, uh, the fundraiser to buy Herschel Walker at home. But... <laughs> okay, so we'll do that at six. Thank you, Andrea. Good to see Good you. Dan. Bye bye. Honored by your presence. So um, um, we have a couple more minutes and then we'll go to Florida. Carl Grossman, you have also written a very important piece that people need to know about the nuclear. Re <laughs> I can't even say this. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission now wants to license small reactors that don't have operators or security forces on site. I mean, it's so sick. It's, can you tell us about this article and put the link in the chat, please? Yeah, well, it, it, it was published uh, last two weeks, like all over the place. Uh, Counterpunch, Nation of Change, uh, Common Dreams, uh, on and on. In fact, in my 40 plus years of, uh, of writing about terrestrial nuclear power, I've never seen such a, a pickup in the alter, alternative media, not of course the mainstream media, but in the alternative media. And the deal is that um, uh, the nuclear industry is pushing these advanced, new and improved nuclear power plants. They're not new, uh, they're certainly not improved. Uh, and uh, claiming that somehow they're, they're safe. So well, here, here's the piece I did in Nation of Change uh which talks about uh the plans here uh in fact i uh, ed lyman did a presentation uh and this is where i picked up a lot of uh, important information in the night with the experts program which the nuclear energy information service out of chicago um uh, uh does monthly and uh in his PowerPoints, he listed uh, nuclear safety issues to what's called part 53 of NRC uh, 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 guidance and so forth, uh, allowing nuclear power plants to have small containment or no physical containment at all, no offsite emergency planning requirements. Uh, again, these would be the changes in the NRC rules. Fewer, even zero operators, uh, advanced nuclear power plants would operate autonomously, letting the plants have fewer NRC inspections, 
weaker enforcement, uh, zero armed security personnel to try to protect uh, uh, the NRC's review standards should be lenient, letting the plants have fewer inspections, weaker enforcement, fewer. So this is a whole package and already what the NRC has done and there's been really no coverage of this. This is back in July. Uh, changed the uh, siting requirements. Okay, it's, the NRC has focused on uh, low density areas for, uh, for nuclear power plants. Uh, but under these, uh, uh, well, again, this has been a, only one dissent at the NRC to this. Uh, these new advanced reactors would be allowed right next to a city right next to a city and in cities with uh, a population of uh, uh, up to 25,000. The lone dissent was uh, Jeff Barron, an NRC commissioner. And I was quoting, and this is my piece. He said, under the new policy of reactor recited within a town of 25,000 people and right next to a large city, uh, talking about reactor designs, uh, no operating experience and so forth and so on. So this is what uh, what is happening, and it really there's a lot of action that needs to be taken. But if if there's been such a pickup, and also I, I see Dennis Bernstein is on this call. Dennis did an interview with me a week ago on this, w with this uh, very substantial pickup. I think people, and certainly alternative media, feel that hey, this is dumb. That uh, on the basis of faith. As Lyman said, people should accept that these nuclear plants would be inherently safe uh, and allow uh, regulations to go uh, to go by the whim. So here's what they should do. They should take these small nuclear plants, put them in the middle of cities and surround them with uh, um, 5G towers. And then, <laughs> then we can have mortuaries like right next. There will be a triple complex there. You have small nuclear plants, you have uh, 5G towers and internal homes. And, it's going to all be, and then the, 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 the nuclear plants can fire the, uh, the crematoria right there. I mean, you know, it's, it's a perfect setup. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, just, just let me say, Harvey, that um, my two major focuses right now, at least the next couple of weeks and the last past weeks, have to, has to do with this, uh, this, uh, this well, as, as, as Lyman called it, uh, the, a, for his talk, a guinea pig nation, how the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is reducing government regulations. So, uh, and um, well, I, I just did an interview on my, on my TV show, Enviro Close Up, which uh, people could just go to envirovideo.com and you can see the many uh, shows I've done, including bunches of them uh, the hoax that nuclear power is green, the hoax that nuclear power is carbon free. Uh, and I just interviewed Gordon Edwards on the, uh, the small modular reactors, which is uh, SMRs, which is uh, a major focus of this push. And so my, right now, my two main nuclear concerns, one, to deal with this, this uh, deregulation, frankly, uh, moving ahead on a very broad scale. And secondly, to counter the baloney that, because a, a lot of all this is predicated on climate change, that nuclear power is necessary to deal with climate change. Uh, and uh, then the, uh, the parallel baloney that nuclear power plants, and you see this in mainstream media all the time, don't emit greenhouse gases, are carbon free and so forth. So these two issues I think are very, very, uh, uh, yeah. in integral to the challenge to nuclear power at this point. Absolutely. Obviously, the way to solve global warming is to fire up uh, 400 fires uh, with nuclear radiation at 571 degrees Fahrenheit. That, that, that's <laughs> the brilliant solution to uh, global warming. We got four questions. Um, we do want to have a brief report um, from Carolyn, Carolina Ampudia on Florida. I also want to point out, by the way, tomorrow in the Ohio legislature, which is um, uh, where they, they shoot Night of the Living Dead, um, uh, the Ohio legislature is going <laughs> to 
uh, uh, vote uh, massive amounts of money for advanced nuclear power research in Ohio. And this is a legislature with a single sentence in the Ohio code uh, called a setback clause. Has, uh, I won't go into detail, we'll do it another time. The setback clause in Ohio is preventing $4 billion worth of ready to go investment in wind power in Northern Ohio. And it was put in in 2016, it has prevented Ohio from going to wind power. And now at no cost whatsoever to the ratepayer, they could get rid of this and there will be $4 billion development immediately in wind power in Northern Ohio. And tomorrow, the Ohio legislature is gonna to vote to uh, fund advanced nuclear power research while continuing to kill wind power in Northern Ohio. It's staggeringly stupid. Um, and uh, what can I tell you? Um, Carolina, I wanna, uh, uh, if you'll just hold on for a couple of minutes, we will get to you for the last few minutes of this first hour to talk about Florida. Uh, very quickly, uh, Ron, Justin, Tatanka, and Dennis. Three, three little letters, IRA. No, we're not talking the Irish Republican Army. We're talking the Infrastructure Recovery Act. The Infrastructure Recovery Act has billions of dollars to fund 90 gigawatts of these nuclear power plants. And where are they going to put them? Well, they're going to put them at the closed coal power plants. That's the plan. This is actually funded. This is for real. They want to do this. They have a plan to do this. The first plant they proposed to do this is Bill Gates' plant where he mostly took over a town to, to fund this thing and get this constructed. But this is a serious funded go forward issue to fund the most expensive, dangerous power on the earth. Right, and they want to, they want to build this thing in Wyoming which has virtually limitless wind power. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a fraction of the cost they could power the entire state of Wyoming and most of the West with wind power in, in Wyoming alone. And this is what they're doing. Justin, Satanka, and Dennis. Uh, so the, the follow on to what Ron was saying is uh, twofold. One, there are also public, uh, public entities can take uh, advantage of subsidies for renewables now. Uh, they don't have a tax liability, but they can sell the credits to people who do. So uh, any municipal utility can start building their own renewables grid, distributed grid, if they want to. So that's the good news. Uh, the other bad news here is uh, with nuclear, you know, they're already not taking care of the spent fuel problems. Uh, and people aren't even considering that to make a safe, a uh, stable reaction, not safe reaction, uh, you need at least graphite mediation in the fuel, which they're not willing to pay for. So all of this really is just a handout to defense contractors, as I'm sure Tatanka will give you more details on. But the way to uh, power through this literally is to have local communities build their own grids of renewables. Absolutely. Tatanka and then Dennis? Yeah, uh, we need to call this for what it is. It's really an act of warfare against planet and people. And it's uh, we have to really focus in on corporate capture of institutions that are supposedly designed to protect us. This is what Carl mentioned about the deregulation. The vehicle is corporate capture. It's not new. Uh, it's been the uh, oil company's plan. I heard about 45 years ago from a person who consulted with Royal Dutch Shell that 2030 was the time frame in which the oil companies were going to control the entire sustainable energy future. And this is what they're doing. And uh, I think we need to explore the, the, the legal as well as the social political point of view when we see this as literally an occupation, uh, like a foreign occupation of corporations into our lives and how to proceed that way. So that's what I wanted to say. Well, we're gonna go, we'll go into deeper detail on that January 23rd, we'll have this mega summit and then link all these thing, things together. Uh, Dennis Bernstein. Thank yeah, you. and hi, Harv. Hi, Carl, yes. good to see you. I just wanna put, this is just a point of information on the other side of the, uh, the fuel cycle, the nuclear fuel cycle. I'm sure everybody's taken note that we now have announced the new B-21 Raider, Raider, Bomber. 
$750 million to a $1 billion apiece. Dozens of them have been ordered. They're the machine that carry those weapons that we continue to build into the 21st century nuclear war. Can you imagine 20, 30, 40, 50 of these things meant for one thing to deliver quickly nuclear weapons? Just the other side of the it's just, point. Uh, yeah, it's just unreal. You have to wonder about our species, for God's sakes. This no no a- end of nuclears. No nuke. And th- this this nuclear thing is an ending. Not right. in terms of these planners. And to talk uh, next week, we will, we're going to, uh, uh, Carl, if you want to come back to talk more about the lawsuits, we have to find a way to protect solar in uh, California. And we have to stop this bailout. So however we can, I can compare notes on these lawsuits to talk and maybe we get Danny uh, get get these um, um, uh, briefs uh, shared between New York and California. It would be great. Uh, Carl, thank you so much for being with us. Um, uh, um, if you have a final word, we're gonna then we're gonna go to fascism in Florida uh, with <laughs> Carolina and Wendy. Uh, and, and, but, and we have a time we gotta finish by the top of the hour. Uh, for uh, my listeners on Progressive Radio Network. Thank you for being with us. This has been the 119th Grieve Zoom call. Um, uh, you know, really fascinating stuff. We'll have you back again next week for 120, and we will have actual, well, you will know listening to this who won in Georgia, which we don't know now. So uh, there you go. You'll be smarter than us. Carl, you want to sign off, and then we're going to go to uh, um, um, and, uh, Wendy, who will introduce Carolina. You know, I'm just thrilled to see all the energy here, the anti-nuclear energy and the other dots being connected. Uh, of course, so much of this is is all connected. It's and indeed, Harvey, you gotta wonder about that segment of our species that would have us uh, jump over a cliff. I know it's amazing. All you gotta really do to worry about the future of the human race is set foot in the Ohio legislature. Uh, it's like being in a bad science fiction movie. And as I say, they, tomorrow they're gonna vote to do advanced reactors while they're killing $4 billion of wind. It's mind boggling. Now for another mind boggling trip, thank you so much, uh, Carl. We're honored by your presence. Um, uh, I wanna go to Wendy Lederman, who's gonna introduce quickly. We have seven minutes to visit fascist Florida. We'll go in greater detail next week. But Wendy, you want to introduce Carolina? And Carolina, I hope you can come back next week. We'll give you more time, but go ahead. Thank you so much. I'll make it quick so I don't cut in. But Carolina is a very dear friend of mine, actually. And she um she was just the president of the State Progressive Democrats Caucus. And um, I'll let her tell you about her stepping down and the calling of the resignation for the chair of the Democratic Party, um, basically due for dereliction of duty. Um, Carolina is amazing. So I'll just, I'll let her um, go ahead and speak. Thank you. Hi, Hi. thank you for that introduction. (laughs) Um, And thank you for having me. As you know, we lost tremendously over here in Florida. And with our loss, this is not a game. This is not like like chess or anything like that. With our loss, what happens is that that people lost their voice and their their loss means loss of representation. Because Republicans, as you know, with their with their ideas, they are not going to represent or fight any of the needs of the people. And what happens is that those needs are going to grow and perpetuate. And and Florida right now has a super majority in legislation. And that would be okay if we had lost fairly, but but it seems like our state party has actually been working against us because we didn't have 50 races. We didn't even have can, candidates to contest them. So how can we feel okay? And that's that's the, the tremendous anger that, that a lot of us are, are feeling. Those of us that got involved in politics, not because we're politicians, we're very far from that, but because we care about the people, right? And what, what we feel is that, that the chair of the party has been lost, missing completely. Uh, it, you can go four months even without having any response from him. There was nothing that was created on the ground. And to make matters worse, 
that the DNC did not put money into Florida. So we went from having something like 58 million that were that were coming into the state when we were having elections to having just 1.4 million that were going to be distributed throughout the state. So that per that, we have a governor that, that it's crazy and that, that promotes fascism and there's actually no consequences to, to things over here. Just yesterday, there was a demonstration of white supremacists outside of a drag show. Uh, there, there's been demonstrations of white supremacists and, and self-declared Nazis right here where we live in, in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, just just during this weekend, people that 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 are newly elected to the to the school board. So there's there's a ton going on. So I wanted to to come over here and just ask everybody to please keep your your eyes in Florida because we're actually doing a lot of work over here, but we do not have a lot of support and. Even even the media is not showing so much of the things that we're that we're doing. So please please help us circulate uh, things. And when when you when you're speaking to to people, because trust me, this is not just affecting Florida. This affects everyone. As you know, we're a limb of the whole nation, right? Uh, so we want to 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 make sure that that we have your support, just as we have yours. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. We will have you back next week. We'll talk a little bit more about Florida speaking of fascism and Nazis. I did publish a piece today at Reader Supported News on Kanye West and what Hitler would have done to him. His, mm -hmm. his lovely uh, love affair, Kanye West with Adolf Hitler, seems to overlook what, what uh, the Nazis did to Black people as well as Jews. So you may want to take a look at that. The link will be posted in the chat. Steve, we're down to the last minute. Thank you, everybody. This is an incredible call. 52 people on the call. It will be rebroadcast to Progressive Radio Network, prn.live. Thank you, Mike Hirsch and Steve Caruso for engineering, Wendy Lederman for co-hosting. Um, we are going to sign off now. The next hour, uh, we are going to go immediately now to, um, uh, to Georgia to the great Andrea Miller and, and Gabriel, and we'll talk directly about making phone calls into Georgia to help get out the vote for tomorrow's um, 